This is the multiple regression video on external validation. As you may recall, the three main reasons for creating a multi-predictor model are variable selection, covariate adjustment, and prediction. Variable selection procedures have lots of steps, tend to overstate model performance, and thus always require validation. The ideal covariate adjustment analysis has just a single step that compares the pre-specified full model with the covariates and the primary predictors against a reduced model with the covariates only. This doesn't tend to overestimate model performance and thus doesn't require validation. Although we don't focus on models that were developed for the purposes of prediction, it's safe to say that those that are based on variable selection require validation. Indeed, even well-validated predictive models can be miscalibrated when applied to new populations. This model calibration is worth checking. I'll give an example of calibration later in this video. One of the biggest design decisions pertains to whether you validate your model internally, that is using the same data set, or externally, that is using a different one. Internal validation assesses the stability of your conclusions only and is the weaker form of validation. External validation assesses not just the stability of the conclusions, but the ability to generalize those conclusions elsewhere. The greater the difference between the study population used to derive the data sets, the more generalizable will be the results of an external validation exercise. Breaking your data set into two parts follows some, falls somewhere in between. The conclusions can't be generalized, as is the case for internal validation, but the methods are identical to an external validation exercise. As a consumer of statistics, you certainly shouldn't take claims that models have been validated at face value. If the implication is that a model can be generalized, you should ask about the populations that have been used to date. Moreover, regardless of the populations, you should also ask precisely how the validation exercise was executed. If you have two separate samples, sometimes called a test sample and a validation sample, the idea is to refit your model in the validation sample in order to assess whether the performance in that sample is similar to, the, to that in the test sample. Precisely what element of model performance you assess in the validation sample depends on the application. This slide lists three different questions that you might ask, each of which corresponds to a different validation method. If you're assessing a clinical prediction rule, for example, predicting post-rehabilitation function on the basis of pre-rehab function and the intensity of rehab, you should use the parameters from the regression model fit in the test set, plug in the values of the predictors for the validation set, generate a predicted outcome, and compare this prediction to the observed data. This slide is a graphical representation of the results. As drawn, the model correctly classifies patients in rank or order, but is miscalibrated. A correlation coefficient, would, would perhaps a non-parametric one, would be a way to quantify the observation that the patients are classified in the right order. A paired t-test would be a way to quantify the observation that the model is systematically underestimating the value of the outcome in the validation sample. We'll have a class exercise that explores calibration in detail. If you're asking the mechanistic question of whether the predictor variables that were statistically significant in the test set are also significant in the validation set, you'd, you would base your decision on the output from this slide. Please note that this isn't the same thing as saying that these output at variables are the strongest predictors of outcome in the validation set. If you want to know whether the same variables are the strongest predictors in both data sets, you'd perform the ver same variable selection procedure and compare the results as illustrated on this slide. 